Now, I tried smacking Eileen for a while with the axe and also golf clubs because Shag wanted to see me break a golf club on Eileen. Unfortunately, I don't think you actually can. I was using this on her for a while, but not getting any results. She is looking a lot bloodier, though. Maybe Eileen's just more of a tank than I gave her credit for. Eventually, she is supposed to produce a pain aura like the victim ghosts. Can definitely tell there's more of an effect going here. Four. Oh yeah, she's really looking bad. Maybe I was worrying for nothing, but still. Whoa, that's interesting. Okay. Eventually she will start producing a pain aura from what I've been told, but I haven't seen it happen yet. I also haven't seen this golf club smash on her as much as I've been using it. Maybe it just can't break him on Eileen. Maybe it has to actually be a monster. Once a golf club breaks, it doesn't immediately get out of your inventory. It remains in your inventory as a broken golf club item, which is completely useless and just takes up space. You still have to go all the way back to your item chest to actually get rid of it. It's another of those game design issues that I seriously wonder what they were thinking. Hey, there's that pain aura! That's what we, well, quote-unquote, wanted to see. So, yeah, back a little bit later. So here we are right after examining the six ghosts of Walter's father, so we've opened up the way to the superintendent's room. And while taking Eileen around, she started doing things like quoting the 21 sacraments. So, yeah, she's pretty deeply possessed. So I want to see if that affects either of the cutscenes here. I was told that some cutscenes went differently depending on her level of possession. Eileen? So yeah, Eileen is pretty far gone. I think when she starts doing things like that and having the pain aura occasionally erupt, I think that means she's as deeply possessed as possible. So let's go get the umbilical cord and go ahead and see how that cutscene is different. Obviously we're not going to worry about healing her this time. Thank you. 
So, yeah, that went a good deal differently. So, see you back in the apartment when we're ready to end this. Again. Okay, so we're almost back at the apartment, and I'm kind of curious if I'm going to get any different hauntings this time. I didn't actually get the fridge haunting this time before leaving the apartment, so I'm wondering what'll happen. I have a St. Medallion equipped just in case. Well, something's going on right near the door. Is it the fridge again? Yes, yes it is. Well, we don't need the candles for anything else this time. So maybe it is actually set in which hauntings it presents you with? So, am I going to get this one, too? No, we're just going to be clear. Okay. So, time to prepare once more for the final battle. Let's see here... Go ahead and take the same basic set of items, I think. So yes, this was something else Shag wanted to see, is how quickly Eileen moves toward her death at max possession. Well, let's find out. Kinda curious myself. I don't think I've actually ever seen a video of Eileen under Max possession during the final battle. So this could prove interesting. If nothing else, it makes the final battle less stressful since we don't worry so much about the time limit. There's really nothing in here. I'd wondered if maybe this was where I missed whatever that final document was, but I guess not. We'll still try to hurry a little bit, at least through the first phase of this, just to see how bad Eileen's movement speed really is. And I'll go ahead and let this play in case there's any difference. Well, I guess it's nice to know I never have to worry about that cutscene again. It seems to just be the same no matter what. Okay, spear gathering. Yeah, it keeps cutting back to her. She's moving pretty quickly. Basically, the less possessed she is, the more time she takes between steps. That seems to be what the basic deal is. The fact that it keeps cutting back to her walking toward her death just makes things all the more disorienting. Do I even have time to make Walter vulnerable before she dies? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, she's already on the stairs going down. She's almost in the pit. Oh, 
Well, there went Eileen, so yeah, Walter wasn't even vulnerable before that happened. You do still have to go ahead and finish him off, though. I could just get in that good spot I had you trapped in last time. <laughs> Not quite close enough. A little too close. It's the one bad thing about the pickaxe is just how long it takes to actually attack, so you don't have quite enough time to spot dodge his uh, little spin dash thing there. Well, not really a spin dash, but that. Yeah, Walter is annoying to fight, especially due to that time limit, but hey, at least we don't care about that this time. Fine, let's just keep charging up a more powerful attack and hit you with that. It may not do much more, but hey, it's still satisfying. too far away. Now you're running like the jerk you are. But hey, we don't care. We have healing items and no time limit anymore. So there we go. Just for good measure. Oh, you're not even going to let me do that. So most of this is still the same. And now the news. Yesterday in Ashfield and the woods near Silent Hill, the bodies of five men and women were discovered. The police reported that all the murders appeared to be the work of the same perpetrator. They are continuing their investigation. Four of the victims were found dead at the scene, and the fifth victim 
a Miss Eileen Galvin was transported to St. Jerome's Hospital, where she died a short time later. Police say that Miss Galvin's injuries matched exactly those of the other victims. Eileen. So we're just going to skip the end credits here, if they'll let us. And, in fact, they won't. So, back after the end credits. Okay, so with that, we got the Eileen's death ending. Kind of a lackluster one. It seems to basically just be saying that we've cleansed the apartment and thus removed Walter's influence on this world but not quite fast enough to save Eileen. It says what it needs to say, but not a particularly exciting ending. So there are still two more endings I need to acquire. Just to silence the music there. Uh, like I said, there are still two more endings, but they're going to require me to do a bit of setup, because I basically have to ignore hauntings and let them take over my apartment. Meaning I'm pretty much going to have to off-camera do a replay of the second half of the game, basically. So, yeah, I'm going to be doing that off-camera. I'm going to place some save points in case any new hauntings show up that I can show. I have something definite in mind I want to show concerning Building World second time. That's going to be hilarious. Also, I do plan to show what the Shabby Doll does, so for those who have been wondering, it will be shown. So, videos over the next few days, they're going to be a bit sporadic in nature. Just bear with me know that I am working on it. It's just going to take a little bit of time is all. Uh, I am still probably going to do some analysis videos that might sneak in here and there, so just, you know, stay tuned. With that, this is where we're going to call it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well.